Hi there, Jen Roke here from StampCampWithJen.com. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Summerfield, Florida, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful card that I saw from New Zealand demonstrator Jackie Williams. This is a case of her card. Um, I really wanted to showcase the spotlight technique, which you take a specific part of a stamped image and you color it, and then you pop it up on your card. You can kind of see I've got some dimensional underneath there so I'm going to show you how to create this card today um, and I really hope you enjoy it every month when I do my stamp camp classes I really try to focus on a new technique to share and I thought this would be a great one to share with my classes so so before we get started I'm just going to show you so I took a whole pack of the um, Subtles designer series papers they come in these beautiful patterns I really liked how Jackie used these for the background. So I just took these subtles, and there's only so many um, pieces per color. There's two designs. Um, well, there's four designs, but two of each sheet of the design. So like for the plaid, you have two sheets of the plaid per color, and then this little fleur-de-lis pattern on the back. And then the other two sheets have like this little square pattern and then this little like dotted stripe pattern okay so because of that I obviously all of the cards and my classes are not going to be exactly alike so what I did was I kind of just mixed up the colors and the patterns in my pack um, so that I could kind of make them go further and then I picked colors that I have uh, Stampin' Blends to go with so that way um, the people in my class could color the daisies to match one of the background colors there. Okay, so that's all I did for that. Um, so this one I used has Highland Heather and I forget which color, which green this is. This is, to refer to my catalog here, I think this is Pear Pizzazz and Highland Heather. Um, and so the next one, the one I'm going to do in this video though, I cut a couple of pieces of paper out already. Here they are. And we're going to use these two. So this is Petal Pink and Mint Macaron that we're going to use for the card that I'm going to make for you right now, okay? So let me move some of my stuff to the side here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a piece of basic white. So this is the regular basic white, not the thick basic white. And I'm going to cut this down to... Uh, let's see what size this is. So this needs to be four and one eighth by five and three eighths. And so basically I'm just cutting this down a little bit smaller than the card front and we are going to emboss this piece with the macrame 3D embossing folder. I'm going to show you how to do that in just one second. everywhere getting ready for class <laughs> okay so we've got our embossing machine and looking let me get this out of the way first looking at the machine so the macrame folder is a 3d embossing folder so we need this on the bottom and then we're gonna have our macrame folder in the middle and then our gray plate the number four plate is gonna go on top okay so and a good tip I want to show you real quick for these plates, if you don't already know, you have this um, line right down here at the bottom. So if you take your paper and you put it inside your folder, you can use that line as a guide to line up the edge of your paper and just kind of keep your fingers in there and hold it tight. And that'll make sure that the design on your paper stays straight and it's not all cockeyed and crooked. So again, just line it up against that line. I'm keeping my fingers in and kind of pinching it closed with one side and then closing it tight on the other side there. And then I'm gonna take my folders and run them through real quick. Now, if you go to use your embossing folder and you notice that um, the plates aren't running through, 
It may be that your plates aren't lined up, so make sure that they're lined up on the edge here and then try to run them through. I notice, especially with the mini one, that the mini embossing machine, that it seems to be an issue. So if you use the mini embossing machine especially and you don't have those plates lined up like that, then it's not going to, uh, you might have some difficulty running it through there. All right. So now for my card base, I like to use the thick basic white. So this is the thick basic white. You'll notice a big difference if you ever have the two of them together. It really is more sturdy like our cardstock is. So I'm just folding this in half. This piece is um, five and a half by eight and a half. And then as you hopefully can see, you have like a little bit of a border there. So we're just gonna take some liquid glue here I usually use tear and tape, but when I watch Jackie's video, she used liquid glue, so I decided to try it. It really is very quick and easy to use liquid glue, so it was a lot quicker than trying to use um, tear and tape, so I figured, eh, I'll use that for this. And it kind of gives you a minute to kind of move it into place there, too. All right, and then, so you can use either pattern, like, I did on this one, I used the little square pattern on the top and the plaid on the bottom. It really doesn't matter. It depends which one you want to show more. I think I kind of like it with the petal pink in the back and the mint macaron on the front. But like I said, it really doesn't matter. And we're just gonna put them on kind of at an angle. Again, using our liquid glue here. And if you just put it on at an angle, I like when you can make projects like that where you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect because then there's a lot less stress and card making should not be stressful, it should be fun. And I like when it, things don't have to be perfect, they can be messy and it looks cute, I like that. Yes. Like I said, just kind of put them on at an angle so you get that pop of color in the background. Perfect. Now we're gonna set that aside and let it dry while we do some stamping. Um, all right, so we are going to use this Daisy Garden Cling Stamp Set. This is one of my favorite stamp sets. I love it so much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Stamparatus and because it's a cling stamp, we don't need that extra foam piece that comes with your Stamparatus. So I've already taken that out. Um, and I just mounted it close, like you'll see it's close to the, the edges here. And because of that, we need a little bit of lift, um, especially along those side edges here. So I put my silicone mat on top of the base in my Stamparatus just so that my paper will have more of a chance to reach that whole stamp set there. So I'm just gonna take my stamp case and put it underneath my stamp, and I'm going to grab my Memento ink once I figure out where I put it. Oh, and then, so I'm just taking a, a scratch piece of paper. It doesn't need to be huge. It just needs to be at least as big as your card base here, but we're gonna cut it down. So it could be um, five and a half by four and a quarter, and then we're just gonna stick it right up along that corner. Because it's such a big stamp, you're not going to um, you're not going to be able to put your magnet down because the stamp is going to reach the whole piece of the paper here. So, take your Memento Tuxedo Black ink and just ink up your whole stamp as best you can. And then we're just going to press it down here. And again, if it's crooked or you know it doesn't reach the whole piece of paper, that's fine because we're gonna cut it down with a stitched rectangle die here in a second. And I have some little pieces that didn't get inked up that well, that's okay. I'm just gonna not even re-ink it, just flip your plate over again and try to push it down in those areas to really make sure it gets inked up. And there we go, I filled in all the gaps just like that. 
Okay, so now we're going to take this piece out and we can set our Stamparatus aside. And then I'm using the stitched rectangle dies and we're using the second largest one here and we're going to cut out this um, daisy pattern here. So, oh, I had it right here. So you're going to take this die and I'm going to do this off camera here in a second, but basically you're just going to line it up so that whatever section you want to see comes out in that stitched rectangle there, okay? So maybe like that, or you could move it over so more is showing like that. So I'm going to go cut this out real quick. So there is the piece that I cut out. I just cut it out with that stitched rectangle. So this piece is just going to get thrown away. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our layering circles and the solid circle on here, um, if you're looking at your dies, it's on the bigger section over here. It's the second smallest one on the corner right there. And then the scalloped one that we're gonna cut a black scallop circle out is from that bottom corner there. So what you wanna do is you just wanna take your circle and put it somewhere where you want it to spotlight. Um, and what that means is like if we look at our example card here, you see I just die cut a section out of this daisy part, preferably towards the top. Um, and then we're going to color that section right there. So I'm going to die cut a little circle, maybe like right there, and then I'm going to die cut a black scallop circle. So I'm going to go do that real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so now you can see I have my black scallop circle, and then I have a circle that I have die cut out of this section here, okay? So I just took the circle, you kind of position it anywhere you want, and then you die cut that piece out, okay? So we're gonna take this piece and set it aside, and I'm gonna grab some scratch paper here because we're gonna do some coloring. And anytime you color on Stampin' Blends, or with Stampin' Blends, they kind of bleed through the paper a little bit. So you always want to make sure you have something underneath it um, that you can kind of protect your work surface with. So I'm just using uh, Dark Daffodil Delight and we're just going to use that to color in the little buds here. Real quick and easy. This isn't meant to be stressful by any means. It's just kind of a fun pop of color. And just this card, when I saw it, when I was trying to figure out uh, designs and project ideas for my class, just really made me smile, so. And then I'm using Light Old Olive. I tried to keep the Subtles colors um, in these projects so they matched up with that paper. So we're just using the Light Old Olive to color in the leaves. And I'm not doing any special shading or anything like that. You can if you want to, but I really didn't think it needed it too much. So this looks like a little leaf in the petals, another little leaf. And I like to use the bullet tip, um, the more fine tip, whenever you're coloring really small areas like this, more detailed areas. And it looks like that's it. Okay, and now for the daisies themselves, I want them to match um, the card background. So I'm using Petal Pink, and I'm just going to color 
the daisies in that petal pink. And actually, I could probably use the brush tip to make it go a little bit faster. There we go. And that'll match that background paper that we have. I'll go back with the bullet tip. I just want to kind of... You don't really want to sit here and watch me color all day, I'm sure. <laughs> so I'm trying to speed this up just a little bit. But I don't want to mess it up either. So I'll go back in here. I just love the Subtles colors. They're really great because if you wanted to make this a sympathy card, you definitely could because it's more they're more muted tones, so they would be appropriate, I think, for a sympathy card if you wanted to do that. So I'm just kind of going in, filling in the blanks, filling in the spots that I missed by using that brush tip there. And then we're almost there. Thank you for being patient and watching me color or just feel free to fast forward this a little bit if you want to. <laughs> okay, got our daisies. And then for the sky, I'm using the light pool party and I'm going in in between the daisies and coloring that background to get that sky. Um, I think the pool party is a great color for that. And just kind of go in between. That's a very light, pretty color for the sky background there. I'm just going to go around everything with my bullet tip and then try to go in with the brush tip and kind of do it a little bit quicker. But if you're worried about accidentally coloring over anything, then by all means just stick with the bullet tip. That'll be fine too. It's better to take your time and not worry about messing up your project for sure. But I'm just trying to Go a little bit faster for you. There. And that is our little daisy background. So we did that little bit of coloring. Like I said, not too bad. Nothing crazy. And now what we're going to do is we're going to glue this on that black scallop. So we're going to take our liquid glue. See, as you can see on the back, it really does bleed through that paper. So that's why you want to have that little bit of scratch paper behind um, whatever you're coloring just in case especially if you have a white table oh my gosh you don't want to ruin a beautiful white table with markers so just get that on there and just kind of use my finger to flatten that glue out rub it on the black scalp there okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the daisy piece on straight and then what you're gonna do is we're gonna pop up that spotlight that we colored right there. Isn't that so cool? Love it, it's so pretty. All right, so, oh, I guess I had ink on my Stamparatus, but that's all right because that's the backside. We don't need to worry about that. And just liquid glue, so fast. Okay. Like I said, just center that in the middle of the card there. Perfect. And then we're going to, like I said, just kind of figure out where your daisy's supposed to go, line it up, and then take some dimensionals. And we're going to dimensionals on the back and pop this up and our card is almost done guys so easy I love this technique especially with this gorgeous stamp set this seriously is one of my favorite stamp sets in the catalog this is from the 2021 to 2022 annual catalog it's beautiful if you don't have this set I highly recommend it all right, so we're just gonna line up our daisies here. Just kind of center it over that hole. And once you have it lined up, oh, 
It's easier if you use like the center of the daisies to kind of see where it needs to go. There we go. Perfect, so cute. And then I took a piece of black um, cardstock and I white embossed it with um, the sentiment from, this one is the many messages stamp set here. And this is just right off the side, the your kindness means more than you could ever imagine. You just white emboss it and then cut it out with the um, die set. Let's see, the messages dies. And this little section right over here is what you'll die cut it out with, okay? And then, oh, before we do that though, I'm gonna take this is my last little bit, and then I have a whole new roll for class, but this little um, Playful Pets ribbon trim, we are just gonna use this and make a little bow to put on the corner. I'm gonna try to see if I can get this tape off of here so I can actually use this. There we go, yay, it worked. So I'm just taking a little piece of that black and white trim from the Playful Pets trim I'm gonna make a little bow. Hopefully this will be big enough. There we go. Uh, it's kind of small. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a different one. All right, so we're gonna open our new package here. That's all right. Plenty of trim. And if you don't like to tie bows, um, you definitely can skip this step. I just like the little bit of extra pizzazz that it gives your card. Cut that little piece off there. All right, let's try this again. Tie a little bow, just like tying your shoes. You know, living in Florida, I don't really tie shoes too much. I wear flip-flops all the time, but tying these bows for cards will make sure that I never forget, right? Because <laughs> I definitely don't wear tennis shoes that much, maybe in the winter time. My son actually has forgotten a couple times how to tie his shoes because we keep buying those shoes where they just have like the Velcro or, you know, he doesn't really have to tie them. Or he wears flip-flops a lot too, being in Florida. So it's kind of funny, funny but not, that <laughs> he forgets to tie his shoes. It's like, oh, how could we let that happen? All right, so now we're just gonna take a little glue dot here. And I like to take that knot section uh, of the bow, where the knot is, and just press it down onto the glue dot, and then you'll be able to peel it right up with the bow. And then we are just gonna put that up in the corner of the daisy piece right there. And then for this, I popped it up with some mini dimensionals on the first one, but I think I might, I think I kinda like it flat a little bit better. So I'm just gonna glue it this time. It's really your personal preference. I just thought it was a little bulky when I um, when I popped it up. I kind of like it a little flat. Just kind of put it right in the middle. I love this saying too. Your kindness means more than you could ever imagine. I think that's so sweet. And then I think I'm gonna leave this one plain, but my first one I kind of dazzled it up a little bit with some basic rhinestones, so you could do that as well. But this one I think I'm just gonna leave a little plain. But isn't that fun? You could do so many different color combinations. Like I said, I'm just grabbing different colors from the Subtles packs and mixing them up, and we're gonna use that. So, and everyone's gonna be different, and I love that. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this project tutorial. Thank you also to Jackie Williams, the New, New Zealand demonstrator that I got this idea from. I love her work. Um, if you guys need any of the supplies for this project, I hope that you'll shop with me, Jennifer Roke, at stampinup.com. And don't forget that if you make a purchase of at least $50 before shipping and tax and use my monthly host code, you'll get 
a free monthly gift for November 2021. It is the Bumblebee Trinkets, and I will send those out in mid-December. I also always send you a handmade thank you card with every order, no matter the size, big or small. Um, so be on the lookout for that in the mail as well. Um, if you haven't already, please like and follow me on YouTube, or like and subscribe, excuse me, on YouTube, and like and follow me on Facebook. And don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. I send a weekly newsletter every Friday morning with important updates. And every month I send a newsletter subscriber tutorial in the mail as well. All right, guys. Well, again, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you like this project. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And until next time, stay safe and happy stamping. Bye.